Hello, my name is Selena. Welcome to the Glasgow Tower. Standing at 127 metres tall, the Glasgow Tower is the tallest freestanding tower in Scotland. It is also the only tower structure in the world that fully rotates from the ground up. It also dynamically tracks the wind to maintain its optimum position when facing into the direction of the wind. The turning structure is 139 metres tall. Of that, 12 metres lies below the ground level at the floor of the pit. So let's head on inside and take a more closer look. Come with me. Here we are at the pit. The tower tapers down to a single point where a 500 tonne weight rests on a single thrust bearing at the bottom of the pit. The bearing itself has a cup and ball shape which has the diameter of 65 centimetres which is roughly the same size as a bicycle wheel. It is this bearing that allows the tower to fully rotate. This is Charlie, our resident engineer here at the Glasgow Tower. Hi Charlie. Hi Selena. I was hoping you'd be able to take us down for a more closer look of the bottom of the pit. Yes, most certainly we can. Now we find ourselves at the bottom of the Glasgow Tower. We're at the very bottom of the Cassian. The tower itself takes its power from these buzz bars. The buzz bars are a complete circle, thus allowing power and communication to be maintained to the tower, no matter what position it's in. Let's go and have a look at the bearing. We are now down in the base of the Cassian. In front of us is the lifting beam that we support the tower on when lifting. On each corner you can see it's supported just by blocks as we've got the lifting jacks in storage. But this is the framework that takes the full stress, full weight of the tower when lifting. So once again, we are now entering into the bearing space. As the camera pans round, you can see the underside of the lifting frame. Below that, we've got part of the superstructure. And as we lower down in, the bearing comes into full sight. Just around the middle, you'll see a slight discoloration, which is the bronze bearing. The stainless steel cup is obviously sitting in that at the moment. Apologies about the excessive grease, but we have to keep this incredibly well lubricated as we try to minimise wear. So now as we step away from the bearing put, I can show you up to see the, the taper on the bottom of the tower, all the way up to the podium level, which is approximately 40 feet above our head. Unlike other towers, Glasgow Tower is not secured to the ground. It fully rotates. So what keeps it from falling over? There are three rings of concrete above our heads, which weigh in at 3,000 tonnes. These rings act as a counterweight, which stop the tower from falling over. The upper ring has 24 rubber sprung roller bearings, which stop the tower from banging against the concrete. Above us, we can also see these brightly coloured motors. They are four 6 kilowatt motors, which is about the twice the size of an electric fire that rotate the entire tower, although it can turn on just two motors. It takes about 18 minutes for a full rotation, which is approximately 20 degrees per minute. The tower can be turned using other methods too, like humans. By grabbing onto this handrail, 13 humans could turn the entire tower. But why does it turn? Let's go back outside and have a closer look at the shape of the tower. Glasgow Tower is a world first. It is a very innovative engineering structure that represents some of the best principles and applications of large-scale engineering design and construction. In normal circumstances, a complex new design would have one or more prototype built to prove the design before construction a production model. 
The scale of this structure made that impossible, so it had to be proven in place. Here we are at the viewing platform, 100 meters up. From here, we can see great views of the city. On clear days, we have visibility of up to 20 miles. There was many different engineering challenges at the very start that started to come together. Now, we have to think that at that time, nothing like this had been done before. And so therefore, you can put as much design theory and practice in place, but when you put it in place, there are always going to be things where you have to, to revisit. And how you find out about these things as an engineer, it's through maintenance, it's through um, monitoring and other things, but sometimes things can happen quicker, you just don't get there. So for us, there was a, there was issues with the bearing that supports the, the structure and allows it to rotate and to do that in a controlled manner. There was issues with the supporting ring that allowed that to be stable as it did that. There was issues with the lift in the sense that the lift had been put in place and, and a lot of the, the forces that would be put on the lift with the tower hadn't been fully understood at that particular time. And then there was obviously the issue when all of that came together along with the weather and the wind and the sagging to one side, the lift itself then trapped itself on the way up. Both lifts actually done that within a period of time. Uh, and I was here then to carry out a thorough examination and an accident investigation to see what was the root cause from the point of view of the lift. I was a lifting crane surveyor. So I got to spend time on top of the lifts here and think about what had actually happened. It allows me then to turn that and give recommendations or put things in place that make it work and, and innovate and maybe change the practice. And so I can at least say, I helped to bring this back, you know, not directly possibly, but helped to bring it back to where it's now a great attraction for people to come to. Up here, you may feel that the cabin sways just a little as the wind blows and hits the tower. It will move very slightly. However, if hit with a crosswind or if the tower isn't facing the right way, the sway can be up to six inches side to side which can be a little bit disconcerting. It is designed to cope with 125 miles per hour winds. That's the highest wind speed ever recorded in Glasgow, 90 to 95 miles per hour, plus 25%. That's a category three or four hurricane level wind and would probably tip a lot more than just the tower. If the wind speeds do get higher than 40 miles per hour up here at the cabin level, the lifts will automatically descend back to the lower levels. Sometimes this can happen while we're still up here at the cabin level. If that does happen, then we have to take the 523 spiral staircase steps down to the ground floor. Okay, so just for fun, let's take the staircase down to the lower level. <laughs> 